It's the name Yeshua that was coming in my heart. Hallelujah. Yeshua means the, the anointed one. Hallelujah. I don't know how you feel this morning, but if you have that name, you have everything. That name is the source of life. Hallelujah. Anytime you are faced with something, with a situation, whether you are happy or sad, let that name come out of your mouth. Hallelujah. If, even if you can only say Yeshua, it's sufficient. It's a name that God hears. It's a name that God understands. Hallelujah. And this morning, is that name that we will continue to proclaim. Hallelujah. Lord, we bless you for the name of Jesus. Kalamashi Terebohushi. Yeshu. Yeshu.
Your name is Yeshua. It is the name above every other name. For the Bible declares that at the mention of the name of Yeshua, every knee shall bow of thanks in heaven, of thanks on the earth, of thanks under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. This morning, O oh God, we proclaim your Lordship in our lives, in this place, in this nation, in the nations of the world. Let your name be praised, O oh God. Let your name be glorified. Let your name be magnified. Thank you, God. We bless you in Jesus' name. And the people of God say, Amen. Can we put our hands together for Jesus? Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be unto the Lord. Amen. Welcome to English service. We're glad to have you all this morning. Amen. Um, in a special way, I wish to uh, welcome back Sister in Kematia. Amen. Welcome home, Mama. Amen. Amen. Um, she had to travel to Cameroon uh, to be with the family. And we believe that the Lord is your strength. Amen. Praise be unto God. Amen. Glad to have you all this morning. Amen. Um, we would like to go into the word of God, uh, to the book of John chapter 14. John 14, 19. Uh, we have baptism this morning at 10, 15. So uh, maybe before you go, you might want to join uh, us to uh, praise God for the new members, the new people who are being baptized. Amen. And uh, also on Wednesday, we will have a special time of prayer here that we call Jericho Hour. It is a time of power. Amen. Uh, if you need healing, you need deliverance, uh, the Jericho Hour is the place you want to be. Amen. So in a special way, we would like to encourage you. Amen. On Wednesday, beginning at 7, we'll be here uh, for, uh, it's, it's pretty much a miracle service. So just come and uh, I have no doubt that God will bless you. Also, uh, for, for those of you who do not know, every Thursday at 6 p.m., we have a time of prayer in English. Amen. Uh, it's a time of prayer that we have established so that those, those of you who are English speaking can also pray along. And uh, Minister Bandama, uh, Minister Bandama, please stand. Minister Bandama has been leading this time of prayer. Can we put our hands together for the men of God? Thank you. Amen. Faithfully, every Thursday at 6 p.m. Amen. Please just come join us. I think uh, the link is on Facebook. I think it's Harvest Church. Uh, anyway, if, if you don't know the link, just let us know after service. We'll give it to you. But we'd we'll love for all of you. We did that because of this service. Hallelujah. So we'd like to encourage you to please connect uh, to that time of prayer every Thursday beginning at 6 p.m. Hallelujah. God bless you. John 14, 19. If you are there, say amen. If you are not there, say, Pastor, wait for me. Amen. Um, shall we all stand for the reading of the word? Uh, Minister Doby will help us with it. 14, 19, just one verse. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. Um, say after me, because I live, ye shall live also. Amen. You may be seated. This morning, I would like to share with us a word that I have entitled simply, Because He Lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will ask the sound system if they will help me. I, I hear um, like uh, a, an echo in my mic and it's like badgering me somewhat. Um, because he lives, Jesus speaks to his disciples and he tells them, because I live, you shall live also. Hallelujah. Last week we celebrated the resurrection of Jesus and we believe that he is alive and well. Hallelujah. 
on the night when Jesus spoke these words, it was the very night of our Lord's betrayal. The hour had come. Death was in the air. Yet, in the midst of that, Jesus is speaking of life. He speaks of his resurrected life as it were already present. Notice, he is not saying, because I will leave, you also will leave. Rather, Jesus says, because I leave, you also shall leave. I like Jesus because Jesus speaks in the here and now. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's not about tomorrow. Jesus is about the now. In the book of John chapter 11 verse 25, at the tomb of Lazarus, he said to Martha, the sister of Lazarus, I am the resurrection and the life. Not I will be, but I am the resurrection and the life. In the book of Luke chapter 23 verse 43, Jesus speaks to the thief at the cross when the thief tells him, Lord, remember me when you will be in your kingdom. Jesus replies, he says, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Not tomorrow, but today. Hallelujah. And the one Jesus making the promise has never broken his word. Beloved, I want somebody to know this morning that the salvation that Jesus gives, he gives it now. The healing that Jesus provides, he provides it now. The resurrection that Jesus gives, he gives it now. Say after me, oh Lord, I receive now the resurrection that comes from you. Amen. Jesus speaks of the resurrection in the present tense. To him, it is a sure thing. It is a done deal. Because I live, you shall live. Say after me, because you live, Lord, I shall live. Now, in what sense do we live because of the resurrection? And this morning, if time permits, I would like to share with you five things that is imparted to us because he lives. Five things that we receive because he lives. Hallelujah. Beloved, first of all, because he lives, we have his presence to surround us. Because he lives, we have what? His presence to surround us. The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 28 verse 20, it says, Go ye therefore into all the world, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. We have this promise from the Lord after his resurrection to always be with you and to always be with me. Because Jesus is alive. You are never alone. Because Jesus is alive. I am never alone. We have the Son of God as our partner in life, our companion, our daily instructor in how to live. This morning, I want someone to know, whatever you go through, wherever you are, whatever tax God calls you to undertake, whatever trial you have to endure, Whatever delight you enjoy, whatever heartbreak you suffer, because Jesus is alive, he will never at any moment be away from you. I want somebody to know 
you are not alone. Jesus is with you. You are not alone. Jesus is present by your side. You are not alone. He is alive. And because he is alive, his presence surrounds you anytime, any place, anywhere. For the Bible says in the book of John chapter 21, that after the resurrection, there were two disciples walking on the road to Emmaus. And while they were walking, the Bible says they were downcast, they were discouraged. But while they were walking, Jesus came along and he asked them, why are you so downcast? And they replied, don't you know what has happened? They did not even recognize the Lord. They had no hope. They thought all was lost. But beloved, can I say this? Because Jesus is alive. At that hour, Jesus came. They did not recognize him, but he was there. I want somebody to know this morning, in your trial, in your situation, you might not recognize him, but I want you to know Jesus is by your side. Jesus is right there with you on your road to Emmaus. Jesus is right there with you on your time of challenges. Jesus is right there with you. And that is why he is called Jehovah Shammah, the Lord who has promised never to leave you nor to forsake you. Because he lives, his presence surrounds you. Hallelujah. Two, because he lives. Secondly, his peace secures us. Not only his presence surrounds us, but his peace secures us. He said in the book of John chapter 20, verse 21, Jesus said to them, Peace be unto you. Peace be unto you. Beloved, you must understand, after the death and resurrection of Jesus, the disciples were living days of uncertainties, not knowing what to do. But Jesus, in their despair, brought them peace. <laughs> Jesus, in their despair, brought them peace. You know, God is interesting. This is a group of people. They don't know what to do. They are discouraged. They are, uh, dis I mean, they just don't know what tomorrow holds. And in the midst of all that they are going through, when Jesus comes, he has one word for them, peace. I'm like, Lord, I don't have food, though. He said, peace. <laughs> I say, Lord, how do I pay my bills? He said, peace be unto you. I'm like, Lord, how do I put my children through school? He said, peace unto you. And I'm like, Lord, I don't understand. Then I heard the voice of one of my mentors in the U.S., Bishop Joel Loror. And he said this. He said, Henry, peace is an empire. <laughs> because he said, if you have peace, he said, peace is an all-encompassing answer. If you, has, if you have peace, you will be at peace and all shall be well. When Jesus comes, he does not come with a mighty army. He does not come with money. He does not come with a new car or a new house. Jesus just come and he say, peace. I don't know what is raging in your life this morning, but hear the voice of the resurrected Christ saying to you, peace unto you. Hear Jesus, the Prince of Peace, speak to the storm in your life. Hear Jesus, the Prince of Peace, and speak into your marriage, Akazimaya, into your family. Hear Jesus speaking peace unto you in the storm that is raging over your life. I wish to speak to someone this morning. You might be afraid because you don't know what tomorrow holds. You may be restless because overwhelmed by the circumstances of life. You may be losing sleep over the doctor's report. But this morning I have come to say unto you, hear the words of the risen Christ. 
peace be unto you. And that is why Paul could say in the book of Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, he said, be anxious for nothing. Don't worry about anything, but in all things, in prayers and supplication and thanksgiving, let your request be known unto the Lord. And he said that the Lord of peace will fill your mind and your heart with his peace right now, right where you are, right where you are, receive peace. Because he lives, we can live. Why? His peace secures us. His peace is what secures us. That no matter what is happening right now in one's life, the peace of God that passeth all understanding right now, fill your mind and your heart in Christ Jesus. Receive his peace. Receive his peace. The one who has power to command the wind and the waves and they obey. Commands right now the raging storm in your life and family to be quiet in the name of Jesus. Thank you Lord. In Jesus name. Because he lives. Say after me, because he lives. His presence surrounds us. Because he lives. His peace secures us. And thirdly, because he lives. His power strengthens us. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19 and 20. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19 and 20 says this. It says, And what is the exceeding greatness of his power? To us what? Okay. Who believe according to the working of his mighty power, verse 20, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead because he lives his power strengthens us hallelujah beloved if only we understand the kind of power God makes available to us it will change our lives many of us have no idea the kind of power that God has released in our lives and through our lives. Look at verse 19. It says, it says, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power? Say after me. And what is uh, the exceeding greatness of his power? The word power here is dunamis in the Greek, from which we get the word dynamite. So power here is explosive power mountain removing power you know dynamite is, is used when you want to make a way and you have mountains you put dynamite in the mountains and it will bring it down so dynamite dunamis is is an explosive power it's a mountain removing power hallelujah so it says and what is the exceeding greater of his power dunamis to us what we believe according to the working of his Mighty power. Say after me, mighty power. mighty power. Okay, the second power is another power. It's not the same as the first one. <laughs> the second power in the Greek is the word iskash. I-S-C-H-U-S. Which makes reference to God's dominion or God's control. Hallelujah. God's dominion or God's control. Amen. It also refers to endowed power. It says here that, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power? First power is dynamos, explosive power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, Iskash, which is God's dominion. Meaning 
that the explosive power of God is available to us. The dominion power of God is also available to us. Beloved, with these two types of powers, nothing shall be impossible unto you. And that is why Paul is urging us that we may depend entirely on the power of God. Because, beloved, can I say this? We already have all the power we need to be effective witness. We already have all the power we need to overcome the temptation of sin. We already have all the power we need. All we have to do is to tap into that power. There is great power. There is superpower that has been made available to the believers. But we are behaving as powerless people. I read recently the story of an old woman living in a rural area somewhere and she did not have electric power. She was using lamps. And she went to the company and she said, I want electric power in my house. The people said, you live too far. She did not relent. And she did not abandon. She continued to ask the people, you need to put electric power in my house. Finally, they decided to put electric power in the house of the old woman. She had electric power. All was beautiful. Then, after a few months, the electrical company noticed that the lady who was asking for electrical power is using no electrical power at all. She's using very little electrical power. So the, the company decided, let us send someone to check out. Maybe there is something wrong in the house of the old lady. And the story said, the man went to the old woman. He said, oh ma, I'll talk like librarians. Oh ma, is there a problem? You are using very little electricity. What is the issue? You wanted electrical power. We gave it to you. But now what is happening? She said, no, there is no issue. The reason why my use is so little is because every evening I will put on the light so that I can see how to turn on my lamps. With all the electrical power she had, what she did is, was to turn that on so that she can see how to light her lamps. Beloved, many of us are behaving like this old lady. There is power that is available unto us. Jesus said in the book of Matthew 28 verse 18, All power in heaven on the earth has been given unto him. Now go. The Bible says in the book of Psalm 62 verse 11, it says, I have heard it once, I have heard it twice, that power belongs to God. All power belongs to God and the power that belongs to God, God has given it to you. 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 God has given it to us as a church. But what are we doing with all that power? And many of us are like the old lady. We turn on the electrical light just that we may light our lamps. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. Beloved, because he lives. Hallelujah. We, his power strengthens us. So let's see that together. Because he lives, say after me, because he lives, his presence surrounds us. Because he lives, his peace secures us. Because he lives, his power strengthens us. And fourthly, because he lives, his purpose stirs us up. Because he lives, his purpose stirs us up. The Bible says in the book of John 20, 21, 
As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. His purpose is that as the Father gave him a mission, he is giving us the same mission that we may go and tell all men that Jesus is alive. As believers, we need to understand the will of God and do it. It is the will of God for us to go out and tell others about Jesus. And because he lives, his purpose, which is for us to go and share the good news that he is alive, shall stir us up. The resurrection of Jesus, beloved, forever changed Peter and the other disciples. They went from hiding to preaching in the temples. They went from hiding in Jerusalem to traveling in faraway countries to share the message that Jesus rose from the dead. The disciples were emboldened in their faith by the resurrection of Christ. When Peter and the other disciples got news that Jesus was alive, they caught fire. <laughs> I pray this morning that the resurrection of Christ, that the fact, the truth of the resurrection will stir us up to go and share with those that do not know him. That Jesus is alive. That Jesus is alive. Most people who do not serve Christ are involved in dead religion. We serve a living God. He died and rose from the dead, triumphant. Hallelujah. Our God is not dead. Our God is alive. And the fact that our God lives ought to be a motivating factor for us to go and share the good news with every man. Hallelujah. Because he lives like the disciples, we should become bold. Hallelujah. Let me share this with you. The disciples caught fire for four reasons. Right quick. The disciples were on fire because they realized Jesus was who he said that he was God. Through resurrection power, Jesus proved to the disciples that he was exactly who he said he was. He told the disciples, I am God. I will die. I will be sacrificed for the forgiveness of your sins. And on the third day, I will rise again. And just as he said, he did it. And when the disciples found out that yes, what he said is exactly what happened, that gave them strength, that gave them courage to go and proclaim the risen Christ. Hallelujah. Secondly, Jesus, through his death at the cross, paid the penalty of sin and he rose victorious over death. Because Jesus conquered death. That convinced the disciples that of a truth, he is God. Because all other prophets, all other big men died and stayed in the grave. But Jesus died and rose again from the dead. And his resurrection is proof that amongst all the gods, Jesus is the only true God. Amongst all the Elohims, there is no other God like him. Amongst all the prophets, there is none greater than Jesus Christ, the son of the Most High God. Amongst all the great men of this earth, there is no other man who has influenced the history of humanity like Jesus Christ. Thirdly, the disciples caught on fire because the death of Jesus Prove to the disciples that there is life after the grave. <laughs> there is life after the grave. Beloved, the greatest enemy 
of humankind is death. And you can say to people, don't be afraid, for there is life after the grave. It is Paul who said in Hebrew, chapter 2, verse 14 and 15, he said, as much as the children partook of flesh and blood, Jesus partook of the same, that through death he might destroy. He that has the power over death, that is the devil. And in verse 15, the Bible says, and by doing so, he delivered all of those who through the fear of death were held in bondage. Hallelujah. Beloved, you can go and declare to the whole of humanity, you don't have to be afraid of death because Jesus, more than 2,000 years ago, defeated death. He defeated the grave. He defeated hell. He defeated every demonic power and rose triumphant. And because he lives, you can live. When Jesus rose, he proved to the disciples there is life after the grave. And fourthly, the disciples were on fire because they realized Jesus is alive, never to die again. Beloved, to know that Jesus is alive, never to die again, or to stir us up, to go out there and declare Jesus Christ is Lord. Many of you know my testimony. I practiced Buddhism for a long time. Hallelujah. But these are dead religions. Amen. Because Buddha lived. <laughs> Buddha was a great man. But Buddha died and he stayed in the grave. But Jesus died and rose triumphant. Hallelujah. And because he lives, I also can what? Can live. Because he lives, I have the assurance of eternal life. Because he lives, I know that when I am gone, I will go from life to life. I will never die. Me and the spirit of death, we shall never meet. Because Jesus has the keys of death. Jesus has the keys of Hades. Because Jesus is the boss. Me, you and death can never meet. Because on that day, when Jesus arose, on that day, death died. <laughs> I like that. I think I preached a message like that once. I say, the day death died. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Amen. On that day, death was swallowed up. And Jesus rose triumphant. Amen. And that ought to be a motivating factor. That purpose ought to stir us up to arise. Because he lives, we must arise. Because he lives, we must go forward and declare Jesus is alive. He said in the book of 1 John chapter 5, verse 11, that he who has a son has life. He who does not have the son has no life. Life and life eternal is in Jesus and in him alone. And that is why the world needs to hear of salvation through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And because he lives, his purpose to see every man and every woman saved ought to stir us up. It ought to keep us Awake at night, praying and crying out unto Lord, uh, unto God for the salvation of our family, for the salvation of our cities, for the salvation of our countries, for the salvation of mankind all over the world. Because Jesus lives, that ought to stir us up to see men saved everywhere in the Say after me, because he lives, his presence surrounds me. Because he lives, his peace secures me. Because he lives, his power strengthens me. Because he lives, his purpose stirs me up. And because he lives, his promise satisfies me.
Because he lives, his promise satisfies me. Why? Because he lives, you also shall live. <laughs> the reason why I can live, the reason why I can enjoy peace, the reason why I can enjoy eternal life is because he lives. The reason why I can walk in victory over demonic power. The reason why I can walk in victory over every ancestral curse is because he lives. The reason why I can walk confident in front of any storm. The reason why I can be at peace when sickness has afflicted my body. The reason why I am not troubled in the face of war is because he lives. And because he lives, because he lives, my soul is satisfied. His promise satisfies my soul. The one who made the promise is not a man. He said, I am not a man that I should lie, nor the son of man that I will repent. What my mouth said, my head will make it happen. Because I live, you shall live also. Mama, I, am, I like Jesus. He said, because I live. <laughs> Jesus did not wait for the resurrection to happen. To make the promise that it shall happen in your life. <laughs> he did not wait for the resurrection to happen. To make the promise that it will happen in your life. That you shall live. That you shall live. He said because I live, you shall live. He said, because I live, you shall live. And I said, Lord, what kind of life shall I live? And he took me back to John 10, 10, that I come, that you might have life and have it abundant. I come, I live, that you might live. He did not say, I live, that you might survive. He said, I live that you might live in that life that is eternal life. In that life that is healing. In that life that is prosperity. In that life that is peace of mind. In that life, ah, can I speak to someone this morning? In that life uh, that is promotion. In that life that Jesus wants you to live. Uh, there is, ah, Samaya Koryaba Sataya. There is advancement in that life. There is victory. In that life, there is all that you can ever desire for life and for godliness. Because I live, you shall live. Not survive, but thrive. Because I live, you shall live. Not just get by, but live a life of abundance. This morning, I want to speak to someone who is not living that kind of life that Jesus is speaking about. I want to pray for you that because he lives, you too can live. Because he lives. Don't live like someone who is serving a dead Christ. The God in whom you have put your trust, he is alive. And he is alive and well. Hallelujah. He is faithful to his promise. And that promise comes to satisfy you. That promise comes to give you abundant life. That promise comes that you may walk a life from just enough to more than enough. Stand on your feet. 
Say after me, oh Lord Jesus, because you live, I shall live. Lord Jesus, because you live, I shall live, not just survive, but I shall thrive in every area of my life in the name of Jesus. Jesus, because you live, I declare every spirit of death that has been assigned against me, against my family, against my business, against my finances, against my ministry, every spirit of death, now die in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, because you live, I shall live a life of abundance. I shall live a life of victory. I shall live a life of prosperity in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, give me a strong amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Beloved, I would like to encourage us. Christ is risen. I don't know why I sense that strongly in my spirit. And it's like many of us, every Easter, we just go through the motion. But after Easter, after we have heard that Christ is alive, Christ is resurrected, we live as though we serve a dead God. Because he lives, we also shall We also shall I declare that where death seek where death seeks to take over in our lives and families right now by the power of this word that every word of death is now destroyed in the name of Jesus Jesus proclaimed victory over death before he died <laughs> It was while he was yet alive that he declared his resurrection. He did not wait to die. Old. <laughs> and that is why this morning I proclaim life in any situation in your life that might look dead even now. I declare life in the name of Jesus. I declare even that which the enemy had planned to bring death in your life, in your businesses right now. I curse every plan and strategy of death to die and disappear in the name of Jesus. Thank you, O oh God, for life that you have given to us. The life of Christ, the invincible life, the overcoming life, the eternal life. Thank you, O oh Lord, that because you live, we also shall live. Because you live, I can face tomorrow. Because you live, all fear, all fear is gone. Sing that together.
Hallelujah. I would like for us to go with the words of this song. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Hallelujah. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Hallelujah. His peace secures you and I. We'll continue to sing the same song. I'll ask the ashes to come right quick with the offering basket. And today is our mission Sunday. Hallelujah. As we, as we uh, sing unto the Lord, please come with your mission's offering. Hallelujah. And we have needs on the mission field. We want to be a blessing. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, so come and give. Before we come, I will do the benediction. And after you give, you are free to go. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, I will invite us to join the others for baptism. Um, yes, if I bring this in the middle. Amen. Lift up your hands for the benediction. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word that is spirit and that is life. Lord, take this word that we heard this morning. Cause this word to be rooted in our hearts. Allow it to bear fruit and that the fruits may be evident in days to come. Lord, we declare your blessings over the lives of your people. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon thee and be gracious unto you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon thee and give you peace. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. May the shalom of the Lord be with you now and forever in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. As we sing, uh, because he lives, come with your mission offering. And after you've given, you are free to go. See you next week. Invite someone to English service. May the Lord bless you. Yeah,